We are sat on the sofa, which can only mean one thing. It is time for my monthly favorites. So I won't lie, February has been a bit of a low key, low vibe, low energy kind of month. It has been very like January feeling. It's felt more like January than January did. It's been a weird one, to be honest. I haven't done much, haven't got much to say for myself, but I wanted to do this video regardless because there are still products that I've loved or things that I've been reading, watching, whatever, that I still wanted to share with you. So I thought it was still worth doing the video. I started January's video with loads of things that I had loved wearing during the month. But I won't lie, this month I have literally lived in a rotation of different sweatshirts and leggings. I'm wearing that right now. It's what I've worn for probably 80% of the month, maybe even more than that. But it does mean that I've really narrowed down my favourites. And they are the Gymshark Flex Leggings, the Tala Skin Lux Leggings, and the Tala Day Flex Leggings. All three of them, incredible. And I wear all three on rotation, have done throughout the whole month, basically based on what's been put through the wash and what is clean. But these are the ones that I have absolutely been living in. I own quite a lot of different Gymshark leggings, but I definitely have found for like lounging around purposes, the Flex, I find so comfy. They're really, really stretchy, so they don't dig in if I'm, you know, laying on the sofa or whatever. I do have different favourites for when I'm actually like wearing them for their intended purpose at the gym. But for lounging around, the Flex ones, incredible. And then both of the Tala leggings, so buttery, soft and gorgeous. Huge, huge fan of those. Can highly recommend all three and pretty much anything from either brand. I've rarely got anything from either brand that I don't love. Every product that I have from either of them in an XL, they fit gorgeously. I'm size 18 for reference and I just love. Now for the more like beauty side of things, to be honest, a lot of the products that I've been using every time I've got ready this month have been the same as the ones that were included in my January favorites. So I've just plucked out a couple of bits that are from like different parts of my routine to show off first. Elemis cleansing balms. Obviously everyone on the internet talks about these. Everyone talks about how much they love the Elemis cleansing balms, but the Serenity Cleansing Balm that they do. If you haven't tried it and you're a fan of their original cleansing balm, I urge you to get this because I love it so much more. This one, I've literally saved for this video, completely empty, and I actually have got a new one to start, but I just don't even have the words to describe it. It's so beautiful. It smells absolutely gorgeous. Like the most, well, yeah, I was gonna say serene and it's literally called serenity, but the, the most like calming, gentle spa vibes. And it's just a great product. I use it to remove my makeup. I just think it's incredible. I'm a really, really big fan of Elemis as it is, but that out of all of their cleansing balms that I have tried and have tried a few of their different like varieties of them, that's my favorite. It is so, so good. Next up, Filter by Molly May. I think it's an excellent product. We're gonna ignore that. I just almost threw it on my sofa. I went from, I think maybe just before New Year's to about mid-February, maybe even a little bit later than that without fake tanning at all. And I am a big fake tan girly. And I just wanted a bit of a break from it. Like while it was winter, while we're in lots of layers and there's not too much skin on show, I thought let's embrace the pale. And I was doing all right at it. And I can't remember what it was, but there was some sort of event or there was something going on where I went, you know what, now's the time. I actually just fancy tanning again. And I'm really glad I did to be honest. Like, it's such a good confidence boost. And where I said like February has just felt like a bit of a meh, nothing month. It was nice to kind of have a little bit of a confidence boost, feel a little bit better about myself. And it was nice that I had that time to kind of like break the cycle of feeling like I was relying on fake tan a lot. But just generally, I think it makes me look a bit like healthier, a bit just kind of like I'm a functioning member of society. So we're back to it and this, Oh, it's good. Molly May really knew what she was doing when she released this. It is the tanning mousse and I use it in extra dark, but I feel like tan doesn't stick to me as well as it does to other people. So I always have to go for the darker ones and then they end up 
looking like what medium tans look like on other people. So yeah, even though you might look at me and think, Jess, you don't need an extra dark tan, it doesn't look extra dark on me. And it's just gorgeous. The formula, lovely, goes on really nicely. It never goes patchy. It doesn't have horrible like orangey or greeny undertones. It's just beautiful and makes my tan look really, really nice. Next on my list is this little beauty that I am absolutely obsessed with. This is the Prada Paradox perfume. I have about three or four perfumes that I have on rotation at the minute. I never like to have too many choices because then it stresses me out, but I don't like to wear the same thing every single day just because I like to switch it up, like based on my mood, how I'm feeling, what I fancy. But this one is one that I have been using a fair bit this month. I haven't left the house much, but if I have left the house, you can almost guarantee I've been wearing this. I already suck at describing fragrances. But it's definitely quite light and fresh like a mix between fruity and floral but without being too sweet as well like it's definitely got a little bit of a more like musky undertone and then someone's gonna watch this video and be like jess that's completely incorrect i i'm not very good at this but i have got all the notes written here so the top notes a pear tangerine and bergamot is that how you say that so i mean i was right with it being fruity and flowery uh middle notes orange blossom neroli essence and jasmine sandback and then the base notes are bourbon vanilla, amber, white musk, and benzoin. Oh my god, did I not say that that was fruity and flowery with a bit of like a musky undertone so that it wasn't too sweet? I was bang on. I was going to say maybe a new uh, career path for me, but absolutely not. That was a fluke. Really recommend this if you like the fresh and fruity without it being too fresh and fruity. And then my next little kind of beauty piece is the GHD Duet Style. It is their new hair tool and oh my god, it is incredible. It essentially looks like a wide plate straightener, but it is so much more than that. It is a wet to straight styler that basically uses airflow technology as well as heat plates to dry and style your hair in one. And when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, flashbacks to the, what was it? The Babyliss? Was it was that called wet to straight or something? But the the old school babbleist tool that used to make your hair sizzle and was a bit scary. I was like, oh my god, is it going to be like that? But it absolutely isn't. I actually went into the GHD salon to try it out and to like learn about it when it was first released. And when we were there, they did like a little demo based on the duet style and then also like a competitor. Not even really a competitor, but like an a similar product that is available on the market and the sizzle that came off that competitor item was loud and this you don't hear so much as a peep not even a little sizzle because of the airflow technology so it's almost like imagine an air wrap and a pair of straighteners had a baby like this is it i did a little reel when i went to the salon and i think i maybe did a tiktok on it as well when i tried it at home for the first time so i'll leave them both linked actually just if you want to see a little bit more about it but yeah absolutely incredible just such good technology that it doesn't damage your hair at all and that actually is scientifically proven apparently the ghd girlies were saying whoever thought this up and i know it won't be just one person it'll be multiple people smart people though they really knew what they were doing with this and then last but by no means least my miley gel kit i love this thing it is absolutely a forever fave rather than a february fave but I felt like it was time to be included in a video. I spoke about it quite a lot on Instagram this month because lots of people were asking about tips. My, not this set, but my set before lasted me for three and a half weeks, which for an at-home gel kit is incredible. And then this set has been on maybe just coming up to two weeks and I could get away with it for longer, but I'm going to New York at the end of the week. So I will be taking them off and redoing them so that they're fresh for New York. But I love the Miley gel kit so much it really just changed the game for me i used to spend quite a lot of money on getting my nails done in salons and obviously absolutely nothing wrong with that like i am so happy to pay what the nails are worth for the skill and the the practice and the experience that goes into being a nail tech but when looking at like all my outgoings and i was like need some need to cut something that was the thing that felt like it needed to go to be honest i wanted to keep my netflix subscription and what i did instead was invest in the miley gel kit and i think by the time that i bought like the starter kit and a couple of different colors it cost maybe what like 
two appointments in a nail salon would cost for me. So it felt like a really worthwhile investment because I now use this so often. And it's really nice me time. I'll stick YouTube on, I'll stick something on the TV. And it takes me a while to do because I just, I don't rush it. I take my time with it. I enjoy my evening. I set, set aside a whole evening to do it. Just so that I can sit there and not feel like I'm rushed. Almost feels like a little bit, you know, my therapist used to tell me that I needed to practice mindfulness and that is the way that I choose to do it. It switches off my brain because I've got something that takes like enough concentration that all, you know, the brain stuff slows down a little bit, but not so much concentration that I can't sit and watch TV at the same time. It's fantastic. 10 out of 10 recommend to be honest. It's just such a nice little self-care activity and I'm all for it. And then quickly I have just got a couple of makeup bits. First up, in fact these two kind of go together. I bought them um, a couple of weeks ago. They are the Charlotte Tilbury, this is called Beautiful Skin Sunkissed Glow Bronzer. It is a cream bronzer and it is absolutely beautiful. I can't believe that it took so long for me to buy both of these when I see so many people saying such good things about it on the internet. And I am a Charlotte Tilbury fan through and through. ASOS had 20% off of their products and I was like, that's, that's a good time to try them out. This is the shade Fair and when I'm not tanned, it is the perfect shade for me. Little bit pale for when I have got fake tan on, but that's fine, I've got a different cream bronzer for that. I use the NARS one in Casino. And then this is the, like, everyone knows what this is by now, surely, but this is the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand, and I think it is in shade Pinkgasm. It is, I am correct. And this is just beautiful. It's a really, really nice shade of pink, and then it's got a little bit of shimmer in it. They go on so smoothly, effortlessly. They blend really nicely into my foundation as well. They never look like patchy. I just love them. Like I said, I am a big, big Charlotte Tilbury fan anyway, so I'm glad that I finally like bit the bullet to buy these. 100% worth it, in my opinion. And then lastly, I thought I would just include this because I did a little top up of it this month. This is the NYX Epic Ink Liner in just black. I just wear black liner every day. Got it on at the minute. To be honest, I don't think there's a time where I do my makeup and I don't have this on. This was very like classic YouTubers to do, but it's quite a fine little nib. Like it just lasts for a really long time, like both in terms of how it wears once it's on, but also the pen itself. I have tried so many other liquid eyeliners where they just dry up within a couple of uses or they don't last very long once it's applied but this time and time again proved to just be the best that there is find me one that's better i bet you can't also kind of love it just because it's really affordable i think i paid maybe nine pounds for this and that's so good i tried liquid eyeliners that are like 20 25 pounds and they've just been nowhere near as good as this this love it. And now onto the part where we talk about what I've been reading, watching, etc. And to be honest, way less of everything. I don't even know what I've done this month, to be honest. Slept a lot more than I did last month. Been catching up on that. And also, oh my god, do you know what it is? It's because I've got a bit of an addiction to Candy Crush at the minute. It's so bad. I only started playing it about two weeks ago, but it's so good for when when I just need my brain to stop I'll play that and when I'm like I know that I need to stop scrolling social media as well So it's like something that I can do that keeps me like busy and focused but stops me like mindlessly scrolling So yeah, I have got that's that explains why I've read and watched less this month because I have got a Candy Crush ad addiction which feels so like 2012 of me, I don't know when it was released, but either way Last month I had read most of Bunny but had a little bit left so I finished that right at the beginning of this month. Fucking fantastic book, really really enjoyed it. Everyone compares it to like Heathers and The Craft and it's like a bit Mean Girls-esque as well. I don't know much about The Craft so I don't know the comparisons there but definitely does feel quite Heathers-esque in the terms of like it being just a little bit darker than other things and it was one of those things where I was like just didn't know what was gonna happen next. Like it really kept me on my toes. At times I thought I was on a bit of a drug trip, but regardless, very good. So I finished that at the beginning of this month and then I moved on to Really Good Actually, which was a very nice change of pace, change of tone as well. A lot more lighthearted, I would say. Funnily enough, this starts off with the main character, Maggie, getting a divorce. And then I read Sorrow and Bliss 
in January and that started off with the main character Martha having a divorce. I'm not married so I don't feel like that's a bad omen for me but it's just very interesting that I keep somehow picking up books to do with divorce. I actually very rarely read what a book is about before starting to read it because I've got a Kindle I just download samples so instead of like looking at a blurb and, and the vibe of a book I go that's a nice cover I'll read that uh, download a sample see if I enjoy the writing style and like the kind of snippet of the story that you get and then delve into it so I had no idea that I was picking two separate books about divorce interesting either way really good actually is about the kind of days weeks months following Maggie's divorce from her husband they weren't married for a particularly long time but they were together for quite a long time I believe if I remember rightly so even though it was a like mutually agreed decision you can still feel a lot of kind of inner turmoil coming from Maggie like she expected him to turn around and be like no actually I don't mean that I don't want to break up let's stay together let's put in the work I feel like it's it's all a bit inwardly chaotic she's got a lot going on she's living by herself for the first time she can't afford her rent she's got a job that she doesn't seem particularly keen on and it's one of those things where you can tell that her life has just done a complete it's gone from being all right to being quite not all right quite quickly and it's how she is dealing with that processing it all and just kind of trying to get back on her feet to be honest she does a terrible job a lot of the time she goes through phases where she is super unlikable very like selfish and just not very considerate of the people around her how much her friends are trying to help her out during her difficult time not being very supportive of them and what's going on in their lives so for yeah a big chunk of the book she is a bit of a bitch um but it was still a really good read i enjoyed like the tone of it and like the way it was written and you know she figured things out in the end that's all i'll say she got her shit together and it was nice to see that i like a good bit of character development enjoyed that for her but yeah it was a really good book i still suck at talking about books but we are working on it we are getting better so maybe by june's monthly favorites i'll have it nailed and then the next book i read after that was tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by gabrielle zevin and that again i don't check what books are about i just go yep yeah, that'll do and i read it and i had heard a lot of people talking about it saying that they really enjoyed it so i was like you know what i'm gonna give it a crack and uh it's about gaming which is very not my vibe so when i started reading it i was like am i gonna hate this but no i didn't even though gaming is such obviously a big part of the plot because it's what all of the story kind of is about there is so much else going on between like all the different difficulties that each of the kind of main characters are facing within their lives it also covers a really big time span i'm pretty sure from like the 80s up until like maybe the 2010s so about 30 years in this book i want to say so there's a lot of ground to cover a lot of situations a lot of feelings and it is a really lovely story about love i guess but it's not a love story in fact i actually want to say that that is part of the blurb or i've seen that on a sticker in waterstones or something but it is it's just a really lovely story about the kind of different relationships that are going on between all the main characters the gaming kind of feels quite secondary to it even though it is like the main focal point throughout it's how two of the main characters meet when they're children it's what they all end up doing when they're kind of like going through their lives so even though it is yeah very much a focal point it didn't feel weird for me to be reading a book about gaming when i have zero interest in gaming it was still a really excellent book regardless i loved it what i will say though is um one of the main characters sadie i didn't like her much and i don't know if i was not meant to like in some books like in really good actually you can tell that they're meant to be unlikable you know they're going through something so they're kind of acting out of character and they have their unlikable moments but by and large probably not a bad person and i don't know if i'm meant to feel the same way about sadie but for a lot of it i was like actually you're just a bit of a dickhead but i don't know if that was intentional or if i actually just didn't vibe with her but there were several points in the book where i was like you're being a bit unreasonable oh i don't like the way you've gone about that yeah if you've read the book let me know if you agree like and how you feel about sadie but i really didn't gel with her as a character if i'm honest whereas the others i liked i liked marks especially 
And then this is one that's again going to like overlap two months the way that Bunny did for me last month. But I am currently reading Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I haven't read much of it yet, so I haven't got loads to say. But like so far, I definitely am enjoying it. What I will say though is the chapters are like annoyingly long, and this is going to be such like a niche criticism. <laughs> but I read on a Kindle, so whenever you start a new chapter, it tells you how long is left in that chapter. And I'm a slow reader, so it takes me a while to get through a chapter as it is. And then also I get distracted, so I don't sit and read that chapter solidly. But what I really hate doing is putting down a book mid chapter. I like to read like a whole chapter at a time. And with the longer chapters, I then feel like, you know when you don't want to sit down and watch a film because it feels like a big chunk of time that you're committing to? I feel the same way about the chapters in this book my current one when I stopped finished reading last night it was like next chapter like 31 minutes and I was like way too long 31 minutes for a slow reader uh, and then someone that gets distracted that's more like 45 for me that's a long time to sit and read in, in one sitting I prefer lots of short chapters where even if I'm reading the same amount what I find so much easier is getting through three 10 minute chapters the one 30 minute chapter I don't know how that happens because it actually doesn't make sense and when I'm saying it out loud I know that sounds stupid but it's just how I feel it's how my brain works and when I see a long chapter I go oh I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for that so my only criticism of that book so far is long chapters but that being said you know it's good so far there's barely anything happened in the story so I'm gonna get into that one next month when I've actually read it and I know what to talk about and then the last two bits for this video and we're almost done um are the two shows that I've seen this month one being Phantom of the Opera and I won't lie I really enjoyed it and I didn't think I was going to Amy made me watch the film version of it a little while ago I can't remember how long ago and I watched it and I went oh didn't vibe with that, did not enjoy it. I don't really know what it was about it, I just thought it was a bit weird. But seeing it on the West End, like on stage, it had such a different vibe to it. Like it was, it was big, it was theatrical, it had really good like production value. And I, I had a really good time actually. I really do think it's so much better on stage than it was in film. I would never watch the film version again. But if someone went to me, oh, I'm going to see Phantom Drawn and Come, I actually would go again. I'm sure most people probably know the story of Phantom, so I'm not gonna get into it, but what I will say is just that it is bizarre, isn't it? Like the whole story about it. But whatever, I had a good time. And actually, I did ask my friend Meg for a quote as to why you should go and see Phantom. And this is what she said. Camp, 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 big drama, intricate set and costumes, big production value. Phantom is a mega weirdo, but very good at singing and capography. And capography, I actually had to message her to clarify, and I was like, what's this word? And she said, I was making a joke about the choreography he does with his cape when he flings it about dramatically. And to be honest, he did do a lot of that. It's a weird story. It's weird vibes. I don't quite understand it, but I had a good time regardless. The singing, oh, incredible. Never heard someone with lungs like that. Wish I could do the same, but if I attempted it, I would sound like, like a dying animal or something. Uh, so that's not for me. My talents lie elsewhere. And then the last show that I saw this month was No Limits. It is a song cycle and me, Amy and Maria went to see it because our friend Hannah is in it. And it was so, so good. I had no idea what it was going to be about when we went in. Hannah was in it, so we were going to see it regardless, to be honest. But it was, it, it was incredible actually. I'll read a little bit of the description to you because as we have ascertained, I am terrible at describing things but it says it follows a variety of characters from every walk of life as they dare to believe in themselves and strive for a better tomorrow from confessing their dreams of becoming a rock star to catfishing their attractive neighbor this powerful collection of songs sees characters let go of their anxieties take leaps of faith and fight for who they really are and honestly that is what it is the songs were so good it felt like really relatable but like in a in a not very try hard way if that makes sense i feel a lot of things these days when people strive for relatability it kind of ends up being a bit like cringy and it, you can tell that they've really tried to go for that whereas this hits the nail on the head with you going oh my god that's that just feels like something i would do or even if it's not a circumstance you've been in yourself you get the vibe of it 
and yeah it just feels like very kind of honest and relatable but without being really try hard which i really enjoyed everyone that was in it was so talented as well i always get like a bit weirdly emotional when i see people performing like whenever i go to the theater because i'm like wow you're just so talented <laughs> it's ridiculous like i just sit there and i'm like so in awe of what they're capable of doing but yeah i just like get very emotional though i'm just like wow you are so talented so gorgeous i i love this for you so that was me watching that but no it, oh it was so good really really enjoyed it it's a limited run as well so i think by the time this video is out it will have finished but i am praying for a cast recording because some of those songs would be so good to like belt out top of your lungs in the car that kind of vibe that feels like quite enough talking from me. I said this one was gonna be shorter than last month and I actually don't think it is because I just chat too much. But those are a few of my little favorite bits from this month. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and let me know in the comments what your favorite bits are. If there's anything that I need to be trying out as well, something that you like just absolutely can't live without, I'll put it to the test and I'll see if you're right. <laughs> If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you have subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. And I'm off to New York at the end of the next, oh no, actually like in about four, four or five days time actually. So next time I see you, I will be probably packing for that trip and going on that trip. So I will see you in that one.